High in the Talamanca Mountains of Costa Rica, there is an unusual tropical ecosystem known as the Paramo. Over 3,000 meters above sea level, no large trees grow at these altitudes, but the ground is thick with shrubs and bamboo. A plain little bird hops around, the volcano Junco. It is endemic only to the highest reaches of these mountains. To the west of this unusual tropical ecosystem lies the Pacific Slope of Costa Rica. Costa Rica means rich coast, and the Pacific side is a coast rich in different ecosystems and a multitude of birds. Costa Rica's capital, San Jose. Elements of the tropics leak into even this most urban of environments. Costa Rica's national bird is the clay-colored thrush. Though rather plain when compared to a harpy eagle or quetzal, it is ubiquitous and can be found from the city to the rainforest, and from the sea all the way up to the cloud forest. Colorful parrots are common, often seen perching on buildings or flying over their squawks blending into the urban bustle. While in the trees around the city, many small birds perch, fly, and sing. The rich coasts of the country are often rimmed by beaches. Shorebirds pick through material that is washed up on shore, while magnificent frigate birds soar above, looking to steal food from other seabirds. Lambirds also utilize these transition zones, looking for bits of food on the sand. In some spots, at dusk, huge flocks of parrots congregate on the beach palms to roost for the night, their deafening calls ringing across beachside hotels and resorts. On the southern Pacific coast, the meandering Sierpe River flows into the sea along the northern edge of the Osa Peninsula. In this maze of mangrove forests is the town of Sierpe. Many of the birds found here are common in other towns across the country, perching on the town's telephone poles and wires. On the other side of the river, however, is the jungle. Each night, scarlet macaws return to their roosts in the mangroves. Only a few hundred live in the country, and the Osa Peninsula is their stronghold. In the waters of these tidal forests lurks the closest modern relative of birds, crocodiles. Their prehistoric reptilian visage and the murky water conceals how similar these leathery giants are to feathered birds as the only other archosaur lineage to persist into the modern age. Further south is the wild and beautiful Osa Peninsula, home to primary tropical wet forests, is often described as one of the most biologically intense places in the world. Its wild beaches swarm with terrestrial hermit crabs and capuchin monkeys frolic in the trees. The untamed and rocky coast is home to seabirds like the brown pelican and brown booby. The coconut palms along the shoreline are used by many birds as a nesting and roosting site. Black vultures roost on the palms in big groups at night. During the day they scour the beaches and forests for carrion, though other birds of prey do the same, like this young black hawk. In the morning, they sun themselves on their roosts, and strangely, alloprene members of a completely different species, the crested caracara. In the early morning, jungle creatures descend towards the beach to feed. Monkeys take full advantage of the plentiful fruit, but so does the great curacao. Crested guans call from just inside the forest, their loud trumpets distinctive over the roaring sea. Many small creeks flow from the forest and along them herons hunt for prey. These hot forests are buzzing with activity. Snakes slither through the undergrowth and bird calls fill the air, but only a few can be glimpsed through all of the greenery. 
This bird, the black-cheeked ant tanager, is endemic to the Osa Peninsula. Deeper in the forest, spider monkeys swing through the trees. In this deep primary forest, the haunting calls of the great Tinamu drift through the vegetation. A weird buzzing call betrays a lack of the red-capped mannequin. These colorful little birds have a remarkable courtship display where they shuffle backwards in a movement analogous to the moonwalk. Heading north, it becomes drier in the moist forests of Carrara National Park, where brown iguanas graze and poison dart frogs hop around in the leaf litter. Here, the local avifauna is excited. A swarm of army ants is passing through. These ants march through the undergrowth, eating any arthropods in their path. Insects flush before the swarm, and birds can take advantage of this. While some tanagers and sparrows opportunistically feed when ants come through, other birds make their entire living following the ants. Ant thrushes strut about, and ant birds hop from branch to branch. This bicolored ant bird spends much of its life around army ants. All of these birds are kleptoparasites of the ants, actually catching prey the ants would otherwise get. In the far north of the Pacific coast is what remains of the Central American dry forest. Most of this habitat has been cleared, but some remains or has been restored in Santa Rosa National Park. The loud roars of howler monkeys fill the morning air. Completing this chorus, there is the elegant trogon's barking call, as well as the more subtle ascending notes from the black-headed trogon. In the tangle of spiny vegetation, little birds like wrens, magpie jays, and ant shrikes hop about. Even ducks can be found perching in the trees. Many birds of prey stalk these woods too. At dusk, the owls come out, like this fierce little ferruginous pygmy owl, and the Pacific screech owls call under the stars. Heading up in elevation into the Tilleron Mountains, several different habitats are found around the Monteverde area. With the mountains blocking moisture coming over from the Atlantic side of the country and being below the clouds, this forest is quite dry. Agoutis feed on seeds. Kawadis nose around in the leaf litter. And in the thick foliage, various birds can be glimpsed. Trogons, wood creepers, emerald toucanets, all hopping about in the tangle. A sun bittern stalks near a creek. The air is full of sound. A double knock betrays the presence of Costa Rica's largest woodpecker, the pale build. Bark chips are sent flying as it drives its powerful beak into the trees, effortlessly peeling bark in its search for insect larvae. The Toledo call of long-tailed mannequin males comes from the tangled canopy throughout the forest. These spectacular little birds perform a leapfrogging courtship display on a well-worn perch hidden among the understory foliage in unusual alpha-beta male pairs. Among all these sounds, one is louder than the rest. One of the loudest sounds produced by birds, the bonk of the three-waddled bellbird rings through these forests. Well hidden in the trees, these birds are truly bizarre looking with three loose wattles dangling from the base of their bill. Only a few hundred feet above the rain shadow forest, clouds linger on the peaks of the Tilleron Mountains, forming the Central American Cloud Forest. This is a magical place. Epiphytes cling to every tree. Strange beasts crawl through the undergrowth and fairy-like hummingbirds with exotic names feed on nectar. Violet saberwing, purple-throated mountain gem, violet ear, and green-crowned brilliant. 
Many small birds flit about. The silvery-fronted tapacula moves quickly, low to the ground among roots and leaf litter, its call being heard more often than it is seen. Up in the trees, black guans search for fruit. These forests are home to many large and colorful tropical birds. Toucans and toucanets bounce in the trees, their loud distinctive calls clearly heard across the mountainous slope. These forests are also home to one of the most exotic and beautiful birds on the planet, the resplendent Quetzal. This trogon is known for its elegant emerald elongated tail feathers that flow in the breeze and its bright red breast. It often perches quietly, almost invisible, scanning for ripe avocado, its favorite food. To go even higher, we must return to the Talamancas. The high oak forests of these mountains are home to many remarkable birds. Beautiful hummingbirds drink nectar, while a slaty flower piercer steals that nectar from the flowers, cutting into them from the back, circumventing the pollination process. Further up, we return to the Paramo and the volcano Junco. Costa Rica is a country rich in natural wonders, and with around a quarter of the land under some sort of protection, it boasts many healthy forests full of amazing birds and plenty of the biodiversity that the tropics are known for.